Hey, Life Fellowship, welcome to service today. I want to say a big hello to our Church Online family and all the men and women in 109 Department of Corrections. And let me just remind you, guys and gals in the correctional facility, you're not a project to us. You are a part of this church family. Well, today, I'm actually in the nation of Bangladesh. We have been hosting pastors' conferences all throughout this week. There are 500 pastors in Bangladesh, and we had 400 of them as a part of our pastors' conference. And so on your behalf, we are ministering to them and pouring life and truth and leadership and impartation and hope into these incredible guys that are going to impact this amazing nation. We've been seeing the miraculous touch of God I know happen and so keep on, keep on praying. And I cannot wait to be back next week as I have the opportunity to share with you all the exciting things that God has done on this trip. I'm just telling you, whatever you do, make sure that you are back next week. Now, uh, two things. Number one, um, today is a very special day because today is May 29th and I know that my wife Tatum is here and baby, it's our anniversary today. 23 amazing years. And I just want you to know that even though I'm not here, I want you to know, honey, that I love you and I cannot wait to see you again. Can't wait to give you some kisses and love you. And I just, I just want you to know you're my favorite person in the whole wide world. And so happy anniversary to you. All right, I get to do that because I'm the pastor. Now, today, I'm so excited to introduce to you our youth pastor, Pastor Logan Howard. Pastor Logan is doing a fantastic job reaching into the next generation. So hey, everybody, if you would, would you put your hands together and give a great welcome to Pastor Logan. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you. You guys are too kind, but it's also really hard to follow it up. I mean, I wish I was half as cool as John Melander and half as buff as Pastor Chris, so I don't get either, but... It really is an honor to be here, uh, to be speaking. Uh, I've done this a couple times now, and I, I love the opportunity. I'm thankful for Pastor Chris to allow me. And I just want to say welcome to all of you joining us here in person on this Memorial Day weekend, as well as so many people, a lot of people joining us online week in and week out. And I think we, we get in the repetition that sometimes we forget. It is such a huge blessing and an honor that we get to pour into all of the men and women at all the correctional facilities in all Texas, in Michigan, and even in some other states that we represent every single week. Can we give it up for them, Life Fellowship? Yes, we are so, so glad. We're so, so honored that you guys get to join with us every week. And so uh, I don't take that lightly. And first, I just want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Logan. I'm the student pastor here. If you don't know me, I, my wife and my family, we've been here for over four years now on staff, and we love what we do. We love uh, we oversee everything from 6th grade to 12th grade, so we get all the crazy but all the fun all in the same breath. And it's such a blessing to lead this generation because I believe God's going to do the greatest things through this next generation, and I love speaking hope into their lives. And so uh, as youth pastor, and they gave me the mic, so I get to do this as my one little plug. If you know a teenager or if you have a teenager, I am urging you and telling you to come to the one big thing that we do every year, and it's called Youth Camp. It is one of the best things that we go to, and I'm telling you, scan that QR code. If you know a teenager, you have one, because we are three spots away from having 200 students and leaders hop on buses and go to Youth Camp, and their lives are gonna be changed. It's worth it, I'm telling you, and so even if you need to talk to me after service, I would love, love for your kid to go. So, that's my plug. The last thing I want to say is just to honor our pastors, okay? We have some of the best pastors in the world, and not only is Pastor Chris an amazing leader, and I love that he has phenomenal leadership qualities, but what I love even more is the spiritual qualities that he has in his life. Like, when Pastor Chris and Tatum say they pray for you, they are praying for you. Like, they are seeking after the face of God on your behalf. Like, I know that they do that. I've been around them long enough. And I aspire to have the, the, the spiritual, the prayer life that they do. And I just honor them as our leaders and our pastors. Can we give it up for them as well? We're so grateful, so grateful. Well, before we jump in today, let me pray and we'll get started. Father, I thank you for every person here, every person joining online. Lord, I pray that 
Every single person would walk out here encouraged and challenged in the same breath. Lord, help speak through me. God, use me, God, through your power and your strength, God. And it's in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. Amen. All right. It's 1030 in the morning. I need a little participation. I need a little pull by a show of hands. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to embarrass you too much. But how many of you guys, first off, let's start with this. How many of you guys use social media? Raise your hand real high. Okay, thank you. Probably about 90% of the room. It's kind of what I figured. Put your hands down. Okay, how many of you use Facebook? Like primarily, put your hands up. You and every other person over the age of 40 in America. It's okay. No shame. There's no shame. Put your hand down. All right, how many of you guys use Instagram? Yeah, those are my kind of people, all right? That's where I sit, okay? Put your hands down. How many of you guys use TikTok? Okay, a lot of teenagers. Some of you adults should be putting your hands down right now. I don't know why your hand is raised. You shouldn't even know how to spell TikTok, and you have it for some reason. It's okay. There's no shame, only a little with that. But how many of you know social media is a common thing that we use, but how many of you know also social media only tells one side of the story, right? Come on, you know it. You know that picture they posted ain't really what happened. So they post the picture. It only tells one side of the story. Let me ask you, when is the last time you saw, you've seen someone post about how bad they failed at something? Or how bad they struggled or, or the trial they're facing, right? Probably not much. But when's the last time you saw somebody post about their beachfront view and the new car they bought and their family that's got everything perfect in their life together? Probably this morning, right? When you opened your phone, you probably saw it. And then jealousy started in the inside of you. But how do you know? There is a thing of social media versus reality. And we all know what reality really is. And so I love working with teenagers because I get to see some posts that are just, you wouldn't believe the some stuff they post. But one of the things I saw was a picture like this. It's like a teenager. Don't worry, this is not actually one of our teenagers. But it's, I, you get the picture. A lot of them do this. As they post like this picture, like they own the car, which honestly mommy and daddy bought for them, unless they paid for it illegally. Like that, mom and dad bought it for them, okay? And they're posting the picture with the caption that says, hashtag humble. No, you're not. You're hashtag spoiled. Like, I don't, I don't get that with teenagers sometimes. Or even with families. Sometimes families post a picture like this, right? Where it's like the picture perfect family where everything's perfect, somehow everybody's smiling at the same time, somehow everybody's perfectly looking at the camera and they didn't wreck the car while driving and trying to take a picture. Like everything's perfect in the image. But how many of you know, that's what they post. But how many of you know, this is really what happens five minutes later, okay? This is really what a car looks like. And you know, kids are fighting, kids are screaming, like cr scratching and clawing each other. That is reality. But nobody posts about that. Even uh, nobody posts about their kid, you know, getting you know, the participation medals now for sports. Like my parents' generation, I know how you guys are. You're like, there's no participation. There's winners and you can be a loser, okay? Like there are things called losers. And you know what? I, I one time was, I was in a fifth grade, I was in a fifth grade Christian rec basketball league. Let that just sink in for what I just said. Fifth grade Christian rec basketball league, as good as that could be. I was a fifth grader, not very good at the sport at the time. But um, they gave out awards at the end of the year, and no, I didn't win most valuable player. No, I didn't. I, I didn't even win best offense. Nope. I didn't win best defense. I didn't even win most improved. You know what they gave me? And at the time, I thought it was really nice, but I realized what they were doing now. They gave me most Christ-like. You know what that means, right? That just means you're really bad at the sport, and they feel like you got to give you something to make you feel good. And at the time, and my parents weren't posting about most Christ-like award. They wanted most valuable player. But nobody posts about this. You know what's funny is nobody posts about the struggles. Nobody posts about, all you see is the highlights of everybody's life. The parts that everybody wants you to see, the highlights, what's going great in their life. But reality is, how much different would it be if we started actually posting and sharing the things that we're dealing with, the things we're struggling with, the things the trials we're facing what would happen if we actually started celebrating through the trials that we're facing? What would happen if you actually started to brag about how weak you are at something? Nobody wants to do that though, right? Except a guy named Paul in the Bible. In the book of 2 Corinthians, he does this actually so many times. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 is where we're going to be today. If you pull it up on your phone or it's going to be on the screen for you. We see Paul, who's one of the greatest followers of Jesus had his life changed radically, and now he's mentoring and helping and going to these different churches, and he's sharing what he's experienced in his life with him and God. And I just want to share this encounter with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10. 
Paul says, he goes, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So Paul has just received amazing things from God. He's received amazing words. I mean, God revealed things to him. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times, I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time God said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So that the power of Christ, or he said, so now I'm glad to boast. He turns it around. He says, I'm actually glad to boast about my weaknesses because the power of Christ can work through me. He said, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. He said, for when I am weak, then I am what? Be strong. Not exactly your Facebook worthy post, right? Nobody's going to post that today, but I want to challenge you with this title and something that God's been stirring in my heart personally that I need to share with you is this title right here, Thankful for the Thorn. Because I encourage you to take notes on this because what God shared with me, I believe and I hope that it challenged you in the same way. Thankful for the thorn. Now, there's a lot of theologians, a lot of speculation of what was Paul's thorn in the flesh? Like what was it specifically? And they don't know exactly, but what they do know It is a messenger sent from Satan to torment them. That sounds pretty bad. Why in the world does he say be thankful for it? Like, Paul, you messed up. Like, something's wrong there. Like, why in the world would you be thankful for a thorn in your flesh? And the reality is, Life Fellowship, I myself, I have a thorn in my flesh personally. There's a lot of times that I've begged God. I've asked God to take it away. There's many times that I've questioned God on his goodness with it, and I've said, God, what are you doing? God, I feel like I could be a better father. I feel like I could be a better husband and pastor if I did not have the thorn in my flesh. And there's many times I've even pleaded with God in tears, saying, God, take this away. And yet, guess what? My thorn still remains with me. And the same is for you. Many of you, it may be a weakness or something in your life that you've begged the Lord to take it away, but yet it still remains remains. And yet Paul turns around, he says, be thankful for it because God is doing something. Now let me clarify something real quick. The thorn in your flesh is not sin, okay? God would never place sin in your life, okay? If it's sin, there needs to be repentance, okay? Now, I'm not saying God caused that sickness or God caused that terrible thing to happen in your life because there is an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and he wants to take you out, whatever he can do necessary. But God will allow trials, testing, people, maybe even personal things in your life that may feel pointless and even painful now, but what you don't know is it has a divine purpose for later. And if you're with me, can I get an amen? Amen. Some of you are like, Pastor Logan, I got it. I know my thorn in the flesh, and they're sitting right next to me. (laughs) We have counseling we offer for that, and we will get you through that. But the truth is, everybody has a thorn in their flesh. And if you don't yet, live long enough, and you will have a thorn in your flesh. Some of you, it will look different than others, but every single person has one. And so why in the world should we be thankful for the thorn? Well, Paul breaks it down, and what I've gotten from it is this. The first thing, the first reason is because the thorn comes from God's hand. Now, I want you to look back at this first verse we read in verse 7. If I'm going to read it again, Paul says, even though I've received such wonderful revelations from God. So to keep me from becoming proud or prideful, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Now, I don't want you to answer this out loud, but I want you to think on this question. Who was the one that allowed the thorn? It wasn't Satan. It was God. And you're like, why would God do such a thing? Well, it says it right there, to keep Paul out of pride. Why in the world would the enemy allow something in your life if it meant you getting more humble and closer to God? Why would he allow that? And to keep Paul from becoming prideful. Because I believe that pride is such a dangerous place to be. That is a sin and is a dangerous place because that is the moment that you think you can do things in your own strength and your own power and that you don't need the Lord's help. And so any thorn or weakness or trial that God allows in your life to keep you humble and dependent on him is a great gift, even if sometimes that gift causes pain. You know, 
you know God will discipline us, right? I know we sing songs and verses about how God's a good, good father, and he's nice, which he is, and he's kind, yes. But how many of you also know a good father knows how to discipline their children? And all the parents say amen. amen. And what's the root word of discipline? Disciple. So God will allow certain things in our life if it means it's going to create us a closer relationship with him and a greater dependability on God. But give me, hear, hear me right, is that God will never torture his children. He will not. But he will allow thorns that feel uncomfortable in order to protect them from having their life destroyed by the, the pride, the sin of pride. Think about this for a second. Do you know that pain can actually protect you from other pain? Redemptive pain can protect you from destructive pain. What if the thorn that God has allowed in your life is the only thing protecting you from worse things that the enemy's trying to do to you? What if the reason you're dealing with that thing right now is to fully depend on God? Because maybe if you never had the thorn, you would never ask for God's help in the first place. Anything given from God's hand is to protect us, even if it's a thorn. And the first reason, he says, is because it comes from God's hand. And the second reason Paul gives us to be thankful for the thorn. Be thankful for the weakness. Be thankful for the trial that you're currently facing. He says this because the thorn gives you strength. Some of you are like, hold up, Logan. I, I'm trying to get this verse in my head. You just said the thorn causes pain. Yes. The thorn makes you weak. Yes. So why in the world would I be thankful for that? Because if you never had the thorn, then you would never have the need to experience God's grace in your life. And that's why Paul says in verse 9, he says, or God says to Paul, he says, my grace is actually all you need. He says, my power works best in weakness. And everybody has a thorn in their flesh. And guess what? Yours is different than mine, but it's for the same reason. Thorns that are given in our lives in order to weaken us, in order to actually make us stronger. That's why Paul says, he says, for when I am weak, then I'm actually strong. So if you've never felt weak before, maybe it's because you've never depended on God before. Because the weakness in your life will cause you to depend on the Lord straight. Because if you're in pride and you feel like you can do things on your own, here's a reality check is that our strength is absolutely nothing compared to the Lord's. And God could do more through your own weakness than you ever could in your own strength and own power. So be thankful for the thorn. I, be thankful that you're weak. I need a little help here. Everybody, everybody say, I'm weak. I'm weak. Some of your pride just fell having to say that. Okay, okay everybody say it again. Everybody say, I'm weak. I'm weak. Post that on social media today. See how many likes you get. Because when you admit that, then his strength can actually work the most through you. And I truly believe that God's power works best through who you really are, not who you pretend to be. And when you're honest and you share your weaknesses with God and you're honest to know that I don't have enough power or strength to get through this, I need the Lord, watch what he does in your life. Be thankful for the thorn. He says, be thankful for the thorn because it comes from God's hand. And Paul says, you know, because it gives you strength. And the last thing he says is this. Be thankful for the thorn because the thorn has a purpose. The thorn has a purpose. And if you haven't heard anything so far because you're thinking about what to cook out tomorrow for Memorial Day, please hear this very clearly. Hear what Paul says again. I'm going to read those same four verses I read at the beginning because I believe if you put your life, put your thorn, put the thing that you're going through, put the thing in your life that may be a weakness or something you've asked God, take this away, but yet it still remains Let's read it again. Paul says, even though I've received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times. Everybody say three. Three, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. And each time he said, my grace is all you need. He said, my power works best in weakness. So now... He said, I'm actually glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am what? Everybody has that one thing in their life. Like I said, the thorn in your flesh looks a lot different than mine. But how many of you guys have ever gone through a trial or gone through something in your life that you view as a weakness 
And you're like, God, I begging, I've begged you to help me get through it. I begged you to take it away, and then it still remains. How many of you guys have done that? Begged God probably more than three times, right? I know I have. Because I share with you that I have a thorn in my flesh. I do. And it still remains to this day. And that thorn in my flesh was at five years old for me. At five years old, I was diagnosed with Tourette's. And you know, at the time, I didn't really think much of it. And it didn't really bother me. It didn't really affect me much. And honestly, it really started to get to me when I was in my middle school and high school years because I dealt with a lot of bullying through Tourette's and I dealt with a lot of shame and insecurity and fear and just felt like God was like out to get me. I was really upset with God for so much of my life. Even in my freshman speech class, I remember having to give like a one minute just introductory speech and I could not do it because I was so terrified. I had to go to the bathroom to throw up. Like I could not do it because I was so shamed, ashamed. I was so fearful. I was so mad at God. Why would you give this to me, God? Even in my life, whenever I knew I was going to be a pastor and I knew I was going to preach the gospel to teenagers, when that like got <laughs> revealed to me and I understood that, I kind of laughed at God. I was like, God, I, I don't think you know how Tourette's works. Like, I don't think you understand like what you're asking me to do and what, how you've created me. God, I don't think you understand right now. And I, I, I'm mad. At, I was like a modern day Moses. If you ever read about Moses in Exodus, when God told Moses, go and do this for me, Moses' excuse and response was, God, I have a stuttering problem. I give God the same excuse so much. I say, God, how do you expect me to share the gospel when I have this in my life? God, how are you really going to use, like, are you, are you just out to get me, God? Do you really even care? And for 20 years of my life, I never wanted to tell anybody. I was so ashamed. I was so afraid. I was so just mad at God because I, I prayed. I, I prayed more than three times. I promise you that. God, take this away. God, take this away. God, take this away. God, take this away. And yet I, it still remains. And I've gotten so mad at God until a year, ago, a year ago in my life changed everything. One conversation changed everything. And my prayers started shifting. I stopped praying, Lord, take this thorn out of my life. And I started praying, God, if this thorn in my flesh is the very thing that's going to keep me close to you and the very thing that's going to keep me dependent on you, and God, if this is the very thing that your power is going to be shown best through, keep it there, God, because I want to know you more. I want to be closer to you, God, even if there's some pain along the way, even if there's some frustration in my life right now, 20 years of my life. You know what's interesting about a thorn? If you ever had a thorn in your skin, it's kind of uncomfortable. If you ever have a thorn in your side, every step, every moment, every breath, you are reminded of that thorn, right? You would feel, you would be reminded of it. You know what's funny is every single time I preach, every time I get up on the stage, for the 30 minutes I'm up here, my Tourette's goes away. And I know that's God's power working through me. I know that 100%. I know it's God's miraculous touch that for some reason it goes away, but my wife, she knows more than anybody that the moment I step off this stage, it comes back. And it's almost like the Lord knew that, yeah, because the Lord's working through it. And you know what's funny is the Lord knew that. Because I think if one moment I get off this stage, if I start to think and get conceited and start to think, I'm such a great communicator, I did such a good job, oh, I'm such a great pastor of these students, it's like the humble and quick reminder that God's like, who's the one that did it through you? And he reminds me every moment I do this, and so I'm grateful. I'm actually thankful for the thorn in my life because it has kept pride in my life and has kept me close to the Lord. You know, the thorn in the flesh was given to Paul to keep him from pride. And I wonder for me if my thorn is the very thing that's keeping me close to God. And I realize now, even more in my life, how much I need the Lord's strength. And it took me 20 years to realize it. So let me ask you, Life Fellowship, what's the thorn in your life? Yours is different than mine, but it's for the same reason. You feel like you've been weakened, but it actually is gonna show off God's power to make you stronger. What trial... What setback? What thing maybe have you looked at in the mirror and you've asked God, why am I created this way? God, why have I, why am I, is my personality this way? God, why have you, why, why can't I be a louder personality? Why can't I be bolder? Why can't I be made this way? And you've questioned God. Maybe you've wanted to take situations and just remove them, but yet you're still in the trial and you just can't get out of it. Let me ask you today, what if the thorn that you're asking God to take away is the very thing he's needing to keep you close to him? 
What if God is saying, I'm going to keep this thorn here for now so that you can always, always depend on me? What if God is keeping the thorn with you in your flesh for this season so that he can prepare you, he can build you, and he can trust you for the next season? What is your thorn in your flesh? Can we have a perspective shift today at Life Fellowship? I don't know what it is that maybe you're walking through. Maybe something in your life that you've questioned, God, why, why don't you just take this out of my, why don't you just get me through it already? And yet it still remains. Let's have a perspective shift. Be thankful for the thorn. Be thankful that the Lord is working through your weakest moments. Because I think in your weakest moments, that's when you have the greatest dependability and need for God. And God can use his power, put it on display, and tell you God has not left you, and God has not forgotten you. He wants to build you. He wants to do things through you. And I believe that anything that keeps us close and dependent on the Lord's strength is a great blessing, even if it causes pain sometimes. Amen, Life Fellowship. If you would, just right where you are, if you would bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to speak to the people that, if anything from Paul and what he's experienced and anything from what I've shared in my personal life, if anything resonated with you and you're like, I have a thorn in my flesh. You know, I, I have something in my life that I'm, I'm, there's a trial. And like I said, if it's sin, that's not a thorn in your flesh. That, that needs to be, that's sin and it needs to have repentance with it. But maybe you're going through a trial. Maybe you're, you have a weakness in your life that you keep asking God to change or to take away or to fix. But yet, what if God is keeping that very thing there so that he can do something greater through you? So God, I pray for Life Fellowship today. I pray for a perspective shift in our hearts, God, that we would learn to be thankful for the thorn, be thankful for the weaknesses, be thankful for the trial, because also trials, it says in the Bible, produce great character. They build you. They test your faith. They make you closer to Christ. And so God, thank you for those moments, as hard as they may be in the moment. I'd like to say this too. If you're going through something right now, you're in the middle of a miracle, you just don't know it yet. You just haven't seen the other side of what God is actually up to. So trust, be thankful what God is doing in your weakest moments, because he's up to something. You just haven't seen the other side. Let's be thankful today. And I wanna pray for those of you that, maybe none of this is related because you've never actually made a relationship with Jesus Christ. And today would be the day for you. Today would be the day of salvation for you. And with heads bowed and eyes, eyes closed, you know that the greatest thorn of all was given to Jesus. He endured the cross. And even Jesus himself asked God, God, is there another way I can do this? But then he turned around and said, God, not my will, but yours be done. And you know what's funny is every time Jesus' death on the cross, it looked like destructive pain. Even the disciples hated that Jesus went to the cross. They were like, Jesus, what are you doing? It's destructive pain. But what they didn't realize is that Jesus going to the cross was actually redemptive pain that protected every single one of us from destructive pain in hell. And what he did on the cross and him raising from the dead three days later, defeating death, hell, and the grave was actually the redemptive pain we needed so that we could have right relationship with Jesus. He did that for you. He did that for me. And so if you need to make that decision to give your heart and your life to Jesus, it says in Romans that those that believe in their heart and confess, in their, confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he did what he did, you believe who he says he is, says you will be saved. And I pray and I believe that today is the day of salvation for those of you. And so if you would believe it in your heart or honestly and say it under your breath that Jesus, you are Lord, you will be saved. So Father, right now, I pray for every person that is making that switch over to eternity with you. That because of the redemptive pain you endured on the cross, we can avoid the destructive pain of eternity in hell, Jesus. Thank you for the relationship, the opportunity that you're giving us, that we believe who you say you are, we believe that you are Lord. And I thank you for the people of Life Fellowship that if they're going through something, God, to know that they can have an attitude of thankfulness, knowing that you're with them and you have not forgotten them, God. And I thank you, Jesus, 
for the lives being changed today. I thank you that all of heaven celebrates. I thank you that we rejoice. All the angels celebrate. God, when people make a decision to give their hearts to Jesus, God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor and all the glory you deserve for. And it's in Jesus, my name. Come on, everybody said amen and amen. Can we give it up for those who made that decision? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So like I said, Life Fellowship, if you made that decision, I would challenge you to text the word Fresh Start to that number on the screen because we are genuinely honest about wanting to reach you, wanting to walk with you through these next steps. And our prayer teams are gonna be down here at the front as we dismiss. I wanna challenge you, if anything resonated with you that you're walking through, you just need a, a confirmation of prayer over your life. Have these people pray for you. That, that's what they're here for. So Life Fellowship, it's been an honor to share with you today. And I just wanna say, can everybody say, can everybody say, I'm weak? That's the best place to be because that's when you know you need the Lord's strength the most. And so if you guys would, if everybody would stand on their feet right where you're at, Life Fellowship, as you leave today, the, the ways to give are on your screen as well as the giving boxes as you leave. But it's been an honor to, to speak with you today. Let me pray and bless you before you go. Father. I thank you for this church. I thank you for every person joining us online today. Thank you that you are with us and we are thankful for what the, the thorn is in our life. We're thankful that you're up to something good and it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You guys are dismissed. Thank you.